What's up, guys? Sports Snippets. Dennis Sullivan, what the heck's going on? A few days back, I put together part one fantasy football draft. Some of my thoughts on getting ready for the fantasy football draft. Discussed mainly quarterbacks and running backs today. I want to focus a little bit more on wide receivers and tight ends. Before I get started, you do like the content, this particular video, go ahead. Hit that thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe as well to my channel, Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan. I want to get started here, guys. Many of us are going to have our fantasy football draft coming up over the next week or so. We are inside two weeks now as I make this video. Regular season starts on Thursday night. That's the 8th of September. What, 10 days away from me making this video on Sunday night, the 28th. So when we talk about wide receivers, now want to want to start with wide receivers. Actually, it's funny because tight ends this year is a little bit more interesting than not only that I initially thought, but probably a little bit more interesting than most seasons. So especially as we get even closer to the start of the regular season, you're hearing a lot of good reports about some of these tight ends, how they're going to be part of the offense. But to start off, not going to give you like my top 10 receivers. Just want to talk about, let's say, top four or five, and then some others that are flying a little bit under the radar. Of course, you have Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup and Justin Jefferson from the Vikings, and then obviously Cooper Cup from the Super Bowl champion Rams. Really, that's your one two punch. You, you want to get one of those two if you can. Right behind them, of course, you're looking at. Devontae Adams, who could have a huge year for the Raiders. He is playing with a really good quarterback, obviously. Um, and Carr, who's really good. We all know that. Jamar Chase. thing with Jamar Chase on the Bengals, now he goes in. You know, he's still a very young wide receiver. Had a tremendous rookie year. Don't you think he's get, he's definitely going to be the focus of the defense more than ever. That concerns me a little bit. It's almost as if they line up against the Bengals. I mean, you know Burrow's good. See, but Mixon could balance that out. So it can go either way. But expect Jamar Chase to get a lot of attention because he was spectacular last year. And then a few others. You got some really good wide receivers, guys. But Mike Evans is a little bit interesting to me because he's always good. I mean, he's been in the league forever. But you have no Gronkowski. Uh, you have uh, Godwin, I believe, is out for the first handful of games. Okay. It makes it, makes it interesting. He should be getting a good number of targets, one would think. T. Higgins is another one. For the Bengals, will he get more attention? Because you know he's very productive. And the only reason why he didn't have even better numbers last year is because he had, he had a Jamar Chase catching everything for the Bengals. Now, wanted to just wrap up my wide receivers with two other guys who could easily be flying right under that radar. When you're in your fantasy draft, you know, you're, now you're hitting into the mid-rounds, or maybe not quite the mid-rounds, but round four, five, like that, you have Terry McLaurin for the, for the uh, Washington Commanders. Now, let me tell you something, guys. Terry McLaurin is a good wide receiver. Just look at his stats over the last, especially last year. He was very effective. The interesting thing is now he gets to play with Carson Wentz, and that's key. This is probably the best quarterback that uh, McLaurin has had a chance to play with on the field. I mean, he could easily put up big, big numbers, as in 1,200 yards plus this year. I like Terry McLaurin, no doubt. And another guy you got to keep an eye on. And really, he's on a lot of uh, radars, as I'm seeing, as I do my own research, getting ready for my own fantasy football draft, by the way, Labor Day weekend. Allen Robinson, now an L.A. Ram. Remember, there's no uh, Beckham. There's no, you know, they start the year. He's going to be the number two guy. 
Okay, no more Robert Woods. So Beckham was really the number two guy behind Cup. Allen Robinson moves into that spot, and he's kind of um, – he's definitely flying under the rug. Because remember, he played for the Bears, which – didn't really have the greatest offense, certainly not the greatest throwing offenses, passing offenses, but he excelled a handful of year back, uh, years back, I should say, with the Jaguars and Blake Bortles, if you recall, around 2015, 2016, those years. So keep an eye on Allen Robinson. Now the tight ends. All right. Now I always like to say this because it, it's so true, right? If you're in a head-to-head league, you're doing your draft – what happens every time, at least to me, in this case, it'll probably be Kelsey, right, or Mark Andrews. Those are, the, those are your, your two premier tight ends. But once the first guy goes, I just sit there and say to myself, all right, here we go. The tight ends are going. But this year, I think you can, you can if you want, kind of slip to that sixth, seventh, eighth tight end and still make out pretty well. It's about... Eight strong, definitely well, ten strong, but there's a few um, Cinderella's, a few sleepers or Cinderella's in there. So let's get started with that. Now you have obviously Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is a hall, future Hall of Famer. Mark Andrews, tremendous season last year. We know that's, I mean, the two best. Tight ends. Kyle Pitts, Atlanta. Remember, he's going to have Marcus Mariota starting for the Falcons, a quarterback. Kyle Pitts is a tremendous tight end, though. Don't uh, shy away from him at all if you could pick him up. Darren Waller with the Raiders. Yeah, but I don't know. See, Devontae Adams, will Devontae Adams, Adams steal some of those targets? Waller's still one of the top tight ends. I would put George Kittle maybe a little bit ahead of Waller on my list. George Kittle, San Francisco, 49ers. Noah Font, Seattle, a little bit of a sleeper. Zach Ertz, Arizona. Dallas Goddard, Philadelphia. These are all pretty good tight ends. It's kind of deep. TJ Hawkinson from Detroit. Remember, he came on in the second half of the season as I recall he came on pretty strong I do believe Dalton Schultz Dallas now I'll, I'll say this Dalton Schultz you could put him right in that mix with Kittle maybe right behind Kittle and Waller but that would put him around sixth ish on the tight end rankings if you can get one of the top six tight ends I think you're, you're doing pretty good Kelsey, Andrews, Pitts, Waller, Kittle, Schultz. You can get one of those six. You're doing good. Then you kind of get into that tier three, really. Tier one is Kelsey and Andrews. And tier two, you got Pitts, Waller, Kittle, Schultz, in my opinion. And then three, you're more into the Hawkinson, Godert, Ertz. It gets a little risky. Noah Font, Mike Gusecki, who I always thought would be top ten over the last few years, but obviously he's a little bit uh, lower for a few reasons. I mean, I watch a lot of the Dolphin games, and I'll end on this note. I mean, talent-wise, he could be a top 10, but a few things there. Uh, you've had different coaches, different quarterbacks. Um, Gasecki could excel. Don't be surprised. He's, a, in a sense, a sleeper. One concern, though, is the Dolphins do have a couple of talented tight ends. It's almost like a tight end by committee. So when it comes to fantasy, not by his own uh, efforts, or certainly not his fault, but Mike Isecki does kind of move down a few notches. So guys, let me know what you think. That is my take, a little feedback for you on wide receivers, tight ends. Have Have a strategy, you know, you go in, and a lot of times you can build that strategy with the tight end. You say to yourself, okay, I want I need Kelsey or Andrews. Okay, then maybe you want to be the guy to kind of, in the first few rounds, uh, set the stage, set the tone, and take one of them. Uh, I would imagine maybe in a second round. I don't, know, I don't know if I go tight end in the first round. Or you want to wait it out and try to get Pitts, Waller, Kittle, Schultz, someone of that caliber. 
wait it out a little bit or take a risk in a sense for that moment where you're sitting there going, I love that moment. Oh, here go the tight ends. Because <laughs> then they all start taking them. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. We'll talk again soon and bye for now.